a cute dog. Thanks, Tony. Well, the seasons, you know, they may change, but one thing remains constant. Fox 5 viewers have a lot of questions for our garden expert, Derek Thomas, with Thomas Landscapes, and he joins us now with a few of the recent questions. Viewers have emailed or tweeted to him. You're in the Twitter sphere now. Right. So and, we want and, to remind and some of these that. did come across on mm -hmm. Twitter, and just so everyone knows, the handle is Thomas Garden Guy. A Thomas Garden so Guy, okay. So follow me on Twitter if you've got questions, send them in. Okay. And, um, the first our, question's about orchids today. Right, the first one's about orchids, mm -hmm. and our viewer actually sent in pictures, I think, mm -hmm. that we're going to put up. And the first picture you see to the left there, it's got the orchid in full bloom, mm -hmm. and then the orchid has gone out of bloom, and she wants to know, is her orchid okay? From the picture, it absolutely is. It's got oh, a good. big brand new leaf coming out. She's got it placed in a windowsill, which means it's getting good light. It looks like it's getting proper moisture. I've got these two live orchids that I wanted to show the viewers because the thing about these guys is Phalaenopsis orchids, which is the type of orchid that she had, are one of the easiest orchids to grow. It's one of the first orchids if you want to learn how to grow them. Basically, bright light, mm -hmm. moisture at least once a week, let it dry out just a bit between watering, and what will happen, this orchid here has been in bloom now almost a year. Wow. What has been done is every time that the blooms have faded, I've cut it back and it's sent out less blooms, but still blooms nonetheless. This is how you would probably get it when you first get it home. And what you want to do is, after all of these blooms fade, you want to cut it right at right right above that node mm -hmm. and that's where the new blooms will come out so phalaenopsis orchids really easy to grow the other thing is if they want to send up new blooms you will get them by having it in that windowsill because when the night temperatures get cool mm -hmm. it initiates bloom in phalaenop okay. phalaenopsis real quick because i just had a question about that i've seen some that say just add ice what is that okay you know that's a new thing and it's okay. kind of a foolproof way to get okay. moisture on it the better thing to do is have the moist, the, your water sit mm -hmm. a couple of days so the chlorine leaches out of it and then water it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And That's don't let it sit in the tray because if it sits in the tray, the, the, the mm -hmm. moisture can actually rot the roots. Okay. All right. Let's go to our second question now. Uh, this, this was a write in, yeah. and, and it, yeah. was, it, was a, it was a really good write in from Bob and Barbara Canton, mm -hmm. who say they watch us all the time. Yep. And they had a question about lilacs. They bought a reblooming lilac, and what they wanted to know was, why their lilac has not grown, and they have an older lilac that also has not grown. The thing about lilacs, lilacs are really, really easy to, easy to grow. They can grow in any soil. They can grow in almost any pH, just between 6 and 7, which is a normal pH. Mm -hmm. The big thing that you don't want to do with your lilacs is have them in wet soil. You want them at the top of a hill or you want them in very well-drained soil. Okay. And their letter did say that they were watering a lot during dry oh. seasons. Cut back on the water. Lilacs don't need that. Okay, Cut back that's on the good water. to know. All but, right. But, you know, it sounds like they're doing everything well and the lilacs should come along. But basically, they can Google a number of websites on lilac care and they're very easy to grow. Okay. Um, this last question was uh, uh, on Twitter. It was on Twitter. That's great. Yeah. We got from Ann Quinn. She right. was and asking about. She's asking about cool season veggies. Mm -hmm. And cool season veggies, our area is so temperate now that cool season veggies, this is a window box that I have at home. I keep it outside. This time of year, it's oregano. I'll prune all of this big, tall stuff back so that I get the fresher oregano. Mm -hmm. This stuff I'll dry. I'll go ahead and dry these herbs. And your chives, your rosemary, all of this can stay outside and oh. you can put it up against the house so it's a little bit mm -hmm. warm or if we get a big snowstorm it doesn't get too covered. But this is, I will harvest from this all winter. The other thing with greens, you've got bok choy here, you've got some lettuces. These green mix are actually available now. You can plant them, the soil is warm enough and at least for the next month you can harvest baby greens for a fresh salad. And basil. Basil is something that if you have it in a pot like this, you can bring it in, put it on a sunny windowsill, and you can harvest basil all winter long. Wow. So absolutely, okay. you can have veggies, fresh veggies that you grow yourself all winter. And even the things like rosemary, like I know right now, mine's going crazy. It never dies off in the it winter. Ne it never dies off in the winter, and the smell oh, is just amazing. I know. And 
the oregano you'll have as well the for the oregano, next couple uh, months or thyme. so. Oh no, this oh, will that's all, all, all through winter. winter. All winter, just like the, yeah, too. just like the rosemary mm. and the chives. The wonderful thing about chives is they are evergreen all winter long. You can use those in soups. You can use them in salads. You can use them in sauces. It's a wonderful, wonderful way to have fresh herbs yourself all winter. I know. What great advice, Derek. Thanks so much. Follow me on Twitter yes. at Thomas Garden Guy. All right. Thanks, Tony. Over to you. All right. Thank you much. Each year.